Welcome back to Mel Explains, where I take medical conditions and illnesses and I give you the basics. I might even try to make you laugh along the way. Today, I'm going to answer some popular questions about the COVID vaccines because I've seen some things on Facebook and I'm a little concerned. So let's clarify this. Here I have a couple of cue cards with the internet's burning questions. And I also included some questions from some of my own patients and I'd really like to share those with you. Question one, who is getting the vaccines first and why? Well, certain vulnerable elders as well as seniors and nursing homes, the staff and the caretakers that work with them, they're gonna get that first. And that's because as we get older, so does our immune system. This old immune system ain't what she used to be. So it makes sense to protect the vulnerable by vaccinating them and also those who are around them. It's the same reason we prioritize healthcare workers who work in clinical settings or in hospitals because they're surrounded by very sick patients. The next group that needs protection are the indigenous people, including the Anishinaabe, the Métis, and the Inuit. Some people in these communities live in very isolated area, so they're very far away from any type of clinic or hospital, and it's very common that they live in large groups of people in small, confined quarters. And that increases their risks of transmitting any kind of diseases such as COVID, for example. The next group of people are federal inmates. And I know there's been a lot of controversy over that one, but let me explain to you why this is important. Like the previous population, inmates are forced into small confined areas with large groups of people. So if an outbreak ever happened at a correctional facility, our hospital beds would fill up in a short amount of time reaching max capacity. And that's for any kind of outbreak, not just the ones that, from the jails. And if that were to ever happen, hospital staff would have to make some pretty impossible decisions, like who gets treatment and who does it. For example, if I have nine ICU beds, but I have 20 really sick people in need of ICU beds, who's gonna decide who's gonna get the beds? Honestly, I don't even wanna go there because the answer to that is really complex and nobody wants to think about it. Question number two, can they make me take the vaccine? No, they can't, but we encourage you to get it to protect not only yourself, but your loved ones. Question number three, is the vaccine safe? Yes. The most common side effects usually occur at the site of injection, and that's kind of a little bit of pain, a little bit of swelling, a little bit of redness. And I mean, if that's if you get any at all. Sometimes you'll get tingling or prickling or itchiness. Some people will get fatigued, might be even a little nauseous, and some people get hives. But don't worry, all of these are non-life-threatening, and they usually pass within a couple of days. But what about a severe reaction to the vaccines? And if so, what happens next? Okay, so when someone talks about a severe reaction to a vaccine, they're talking about anaphylactic shock or the need for hospitalization. This is very rare, but it has happened. So if you or anyone you know has taken the COVID-19 vaccination and has had that severe reaction, don't go back for that second dose. Mm -mm. Also, healthcare providers are required to flag and report any kind of side effects to Health Canada even if they're not 100% sure that it was in fact a side effect, just in case. And that's why it's still really important that you stay in the office for at least 15 to 20 minutes after your vaccination so that we can monitor for those side effects. Let's go back to the internet for a second. Now I've seen some pretty crazy claims about deaths involving the COVID-19 vaccinations. Well, all of the deaths to date have not been linked with the vaccination. And here's how we know this. Remember, all possible reactions must be reported to Health Canada. So let's say somebody has a terminal illness such as cancer, Parkinson's, or Alzheimer's, and they get the vaccination, as they should, because they're in the vulnerable group. Now, a couple days later, unfortunately, their illness takes them from us. Us as healthcare providers still need to report this to Health Canada because just in case, you never know, maybe it did really have to do with the vaccine. And in those cases, a medical investigation is opened and that usually includes an autopsy. And from all the autopsies and medical investigations done to date, there has been no link between the vaccine and the deaths because they have been due to the progression of that person's disease. Okay, but how bad is COVID really? Well, let's pretend that 
we let COVID run around and do its thing across the entire country without a vaccination. What would happen then? Well, eventually everybody would come into contact with it at some point. And at that point, 80 out of 100 people would get it and be asymptomatic or they barely know they had it. 15 out of 100 people would probably need to go to the hospital, maybe even need oxygen. And finally, the last five people out of that 100 people would need ICU beds because they would be that sick. According to Google, Canada has something like 37.5 million people in it. And out of that 37.5 million people, if we took five people for every 100, that would come up to be something on the lines of almost 2 million people. That's the size of a small European country needing ICU hospital beds. That's 2 million people competing for ICU beds. And it's not just between the COVID folks, they're competing against other people who need ICU beds as well, like the car accidents, the emergency surgery, the people who have sepsis, the heart attacks, the strokes, the list goes on. And there's only something like 1,200 hospitals in this country. We don't have enough rooms for that many people. Okay, that topic was a little heavy, let's move on. What if I'm pregnant or breastfeeding? Well, we actually don't have much data at the moment for people who are pregnant or breastfeeding, but it is still recommended that they get the vaccine because theoretically speaking, there isn't an increased safety concern. How does the vaccine work inside my body? Ooh, I like this one. So every part of your body is made of cells. They're so small, you need a little microscope to see them. And cells are known for being teeny weeny mighty machines. And at the center of our cells, we have the motherboard or the nucleus. And inside that nucleus is your DNA or your genetic code. I'm not gonna bore you with the specifics, but what you do need to know is that the nucleus is like a chamber. And inside this chamber is a couple of little guys who are working on some blueprints. And when they're finished with their drawings and their calculations, they basically take that blueprint and they shove it out into the cytoplasm. What's a cytoplasm? It's this giant goopy part, like all around it. Then some other guy comes along and he's gonna read it. He's gonna grab it, read it, and tell the other cell members what to do. And from there, they all start construction on whatever it is the blueprint told them to do. And this happens all day, every day, 24 seven. Now, let's pause and take a look at the coronavirus. It's basically like this little ball with spikes on it. And the spikes are kind of like its hair and we call them spike proteins. Now remember how our cells create blueprints to start construction projects? The scientists who invented the COVID-19 vaccine made a blueprint to the spikes on the coronavirus, just the spikes. And it's really clever, here's how it works. The vaccine injects the spike protein blueprints into the cells of your body. Hey guys, I found this, this blueprint floating around. Oh yeah, bud, what's it say? Uh, telling us to build this odd spike looking thing. Well, that's a bit weird, eh? Uh-huh. Probably shouldn't question it though, eh? Probably not. So your cell takes the blueprints and creates the little spike proteins, just like the ones on the coronavirus body. Then they get rid of the vaccine blueprints because they did a job well done. They're such pretty spikes. <laughs> then they just kind of put the spikes out there for all to see because the blueprints told it to. And who's gonna come across those spike proteins? You bet it's gonna be your immune system. In particular, the white blood cells. They are violent and nasty tempered creatures. Hey, 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 what's this? What's this? What's this? Who put this here? Hey, you're not supposed to be here, pal. Now it's the white blood cells job to assess and eliminate threats from your body. You talking to me? And it absolutely hates anything that isn't usually found inside the body. <laughs> so now the vaccine has given the blueprints to your cell, your cell being the cool machine that it is, created those spike proteins and your immune system knows what it looks like and can recognize it now. If those spike proteins or any of their little buddies show their faces around here again, I'm gonna wreck them. what I tell ya? The immune system is very aggressive, but that's really important because if ever you do come across the coronavirus, you want it to react fiercely and immediately. 
it's gonna remember that spike protein and it's gonna react way quicker than if you hadn't been vaccinated. Ah! But what if I've already had COVID? Should I still get the vaccine? Yes, and that's because we're not sure how long your natural immunity will last after being infected. And there's been cases reported of people getting reinfected with COVID. So that means getting COVID again, as soon as five months after their initial infection. And since COVID has severe health risks, it's better to get that extra boost your body needs. If you're injecting blueprints of the virus, can the vaccine give me COVID? No, because the instructions clearly say to only build that little spike protein. It's kind of like that piece of hair pretty useless on its own, but the immune system's already seen it and it knows what it looks like and it'll react to it. Since it's going inside my cells, can it change my DNA? No, absolutely not, not at all. Remember that nucleus, that chamber? It kind of needs backstage passes to even think about getting in there. And blueprints can't hold tickets. And our final question of the episode is, can I still get COVID if I've been vaccinated? The short answer is yes. The vaccine prepares your immune system for a quick aggressive response to the actual virus. So it means you're less likely to get it. And if you do get it, the vaccine will help protect you from worst case scenarios like ending up in those ICU beds. But the thing is, is the vaccine needs your immune system to be healthy. So if your immune system becomes compromised, estimate what she used to be, you have a higher chance of infection or reinfection. And that's why it's also super important that you keep wearing your mask even after you've gotten vaccinated. Because if your immune system is compromised, you might not always know it, and you could be involuntarily spreading COVID to other people, even if you had the vaccine, and even if you've had COVID before. Well, that's all for today, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. Got a little rough at times, but I really hope you've learned a lot, and keep an eye out for new upcoming episodes. Until next time, stay safe.